All right, hello. Um, welcome to Robotics 102 in fall 2021. Uh, this is Introduction to AI and Programming. Uh, I am Professor Chad Jenkins, and today this lecture is going to be about C++ operators and variables. And so, um, and so one thing that I think is just a, a, a really cool before we get started with a robot is just to make sure that we have good fluency in C++, uh, but also computational thinking. And so, so I just thought I would start us off with just a, a little a little exercise here. Uh, well, not really exercise, but just an interesting, uh, an interesting um, uh, activity. And so, uh, so let's let's uh, let's just try this real quick. Um, take this expression that you have that I have right here. So this is the square root of cosine x times uh, cosine uh, times uh, cosine um, of three hundred times x plus square root of the absolute value of x minus 0 0.7 times four uh, minus x squared to the, um, to the 100th power or to the, to the power of one 100th, I should say, right? Um, and put that into Google. And then we'll also, these other terms here are just gonna, we're just gonna plot a boundary around that and do it only within a limited, uh, a limited space. And so if we do this, uh, what we, what you should get is the result that looks like uh, looks like this, just a big heart, <laughs> just a, a heart that just uh, you know just good wishes. And so so I found this one time, and so it's just really it's just really fun to see it, and then mess around with it and and do various things in the in the search query. Um, but one thing that's really important to note about this is that um, is that there that this this relates to how we can, should think about computation, that the graph that we're plotting out, the visual description of the heart that we have here is really represented in code. That's how our, how our computer sees this, uh, th this, um, this figure. Um, in addition, you know, we can express this as algebra. You know, we can express this mathematically. Oftentimes when you're coding, coding is algebra. Uh, you're really taking algebraic expressions. What we're going to cover today really is how do we perform algebra and, and, and arithmetic or just express al algebraic statements um, in code. And so we do that using ar uh, arithmetic operators. So, uh, so C++ supports, um, supports addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, as well as many other mathematical functions. And we can also represent variables. So the same variables that we have in math, we can, we can represent... Um, we can represent those in a pro in, this, in C++ or any programming language or just computationally. And, uh, and those can take on any value that we would like to set. So, you know, to some extent code, it, it's not, not completely, but for, but the way, one way to think about it is that coding is algebra, code is algebra. And so I'd like to roughly call this, uh, this lecture really uh, arithmetic and mo and, uh, and algebra in C or mostly algebra in C. Um, and, or in C++, I should say. I'm a C programmer at heart, uh, but you know, but C++, I've come to I'm, I've come to love it over time. Um, so with this, when we when we're building up our uh, our our fluency in C++, we should know that we're we're building up to uh, to project one, which is uh, which is having our robot uh, do a wall following. So have our robot move around and and follow a wall. Your code is going to for the wall follower is going to look something like this. So this is this is our reference implementation with the lots of stuff redacted here. Um, and if you're looking at this code, or at least just the the scaffold that we have here, a lot of this maybe looks like what is this? <laughs> this is a lot of stuff that we that we haven't covered yet. And you're right because uh, because there are a number of things that we have to talk about uh, in C plus plus. So you have the basic fluency in programming so that so you can start to write programs like this, or at least understand what those programs say. Um, and so we have a list of, of, uh, of things that we need to cover. Um, and so fortunately, we've started to cover some of these. So if you remember our last lecture where we covered Hello World, we talked about the, the structure of a C++ program um, with the main function and then print operators. Um, and then, uh, and then being able to do, uh, to be able to, to run that, compile it and execute. And so we can output out to, uh, out, to, uh, out to the screen. So we've covered a little bit of user input and output, um, but we've, won't, we've only covered the output part of it. So that's still, still something we have to do. Um, and so we've covered some of these things already. Um, we still have a bit more to go, as you can see. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna explore all of these. So we're gonna get to all of those, those, uh, 
those um, those features, uh, the, those aspects of C++ through the project, through the pocket calc application, uh, the pocket calc program that we're going to write together, which is project zero. And so that's really what we're going to cover now and over the next couple of lectures. And so uh, so project project zero, just as a reminder, is uh, is our first project. Um, you'll know why we use zero instead of one <laughs> uh, when we get in a few lectures in, but uh, but that's uh, that's where we're going to start, and that's going to help us build out so that we can we can start to have our robot navigate, and that's really the robotics 102 projects. So, with that, let's dive into our calculator. Um, our calculator, you know, uh, you know, your pocket calculator, you know, this is mine from uh, that I'm running on my on my MacBook right here, um, but pocket calculators can be found everywhere. In fact, calculation runs everywhere around me, um, get the money, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, so we, we have calculators that run all over the place. They have, uh, they, they, um, you know, we, we use them in our, in our daily work. We use them when we're trying to, to work through problems with, with our friends, the calculations we use to, to make architectural designs. Um, it's, it's all throughout Bitcoin. Your fitness tracker runs it. Whenever you're doing a survey, you're using math in order to generate those plots. And, and, you know, and sometimes you don't even use a calculator. So for instance, I love watching The Price is Right, which you see in the lower corner. Um, you know, I can't watch it every day. In fact, most days I can't watch it. But, uh, but they have like, a, you know, but you're, you're basically estimating how much a collection of prizes are and then guessing how much it costs. And so in my head, I'm doing my own little calculator. I don't have the actual calculator. I'm doing it. But, um, but you know, but if you watch The Price is Right, you're sort of doing those calculations. You have a, and you can have a pocket calculator out, you know, trying to, trying to help you with that. Um, but you know, but but in the end, you got to make sure that you get as close as possible without getting over. So anyway, uh, you know, these pocket calculators can be found everywhere. You know, they're not really that expensive these days. In fact, you know, when you're buying when you're buying a, a calculator, you're you're pay, buying more of the materials around the calculator than than the actual computation itself. And so that's why these things are basically you know free. They're just simple applications that run on your smartphone or, or anywhere like that. Uh, the calculator is so pervasive that people have, uh, they, they don't just, they've written songs about pocket calculators. So here's one from Kraftwerk over here. Um, and they have made songs with pocket calculators. So there's a musical calculator here. And so I just thought I would share the Super Mario theme. It actually is a very good watch if you want to, if you want to see that. Um, and calculators have been been with me all throughout all, all throughout my life, but has been around our society for 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 you know for for um, for millennia, right? Starting from the abacus, all the way through mechanical calculators to the digital ones that we have now. Um, and you know, and and um, and when I think about my evolution, you know, I started with uh, the little professor right here. <laughs> I, I didn't know that I would be I would be a professor myself, so I just. I always found the little professor, uh, you know, just an, <laughs> an interesting thing. I didn't know what a professor was when I when I started that, but now I do. Um, scientific calculators, calculator watch, you know, spelling words with calculators, graphing calculators, uh, they've been pervasive with me throughout my uh, throughout my life. Um, not only that, we should note that that um, that before the the advent of of digital computation, um, you know, calculators were oftentimes we're, we're in science, uh, we're, 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 we're actually uh, people. Um, so, cal so, the, so the coders, uh, the calculators of the day weren't done through computing, they were done through just simple, simple uh, calculation systems. And the people were actually doing those calculations, they did it by hand. Um, and so if you haven't seen hidden figures or you haven't heard about the, the, the women who, who are at the foundation of computing, I would, I would recommend reading about some of those stories. Um, but it's through the advancements with calculators and computing that we've seen that, you know, that, you know, that, that what was launched in, um, in Friendship 7 with the, with the um, you know, by NASA, you know, it, it had analog device all around you. It was a very complicated cockpit. Um, but now in 2020, if you saw with the SpaceX launch, um, you know, the cockpit looks very clean. It's very smooth. It's due to those advances in computing. But at the end of it all, both of them are doing basic calculations underneath there. And so that's where we're going to start with thinking about how to, how to just do basic computations in C++, basic arithmetic, cal arithmetic uh, calculations in C++, because it, it really is all around you. Um, and so let's just walk through a couple of simple examples. So this is, this is me, um, uh, just, uh, just, you know, um, 
just uh, you know, opening up my uh, my calculator here on my on my on my MacBook, and I just want to do a, a simple computation here. So I'm going to do uh, three plus four, I mean three times four, excuse me, three times four equals twelve. And so if I do this, I can click a three, and then I'll finally get to pressing that X. Three times four equals twelve, and works great, awesome. Um, we should note that that from a, in terms of this operation. Uh, this is this operation is done through what we call infix notation. Uh, infix notation says that you have an operand that's a, that's a number. Then you apply an operator that's in between them. It's in between a, a second operand, and uh, and that really expresses what our what our what our what operation we're performing. And then that produces a result on the right hand side of this this um, this this equal sign. Um, infix notation. You know you don't have to do things this way. Uh, you could make, you could have prefix notation where the operator came first, followed by two operands, or you can have postfix notation where you had two operands and then the, then the operator. Um, and when I'm looking at this, I realized I, I should reverse the order. That should, the postfix should be four, three um, multiplication. Order does not matter for multiplication, we should note, um, but for some operators, it makes a big difference. And I'll let you think about that. Um, so with, with this, uh, so our basic arithmetic operations, uh, our operators can perform basic arithmetic operations. And so these are, these are the things we've, we've come to, to know and love in that we can do, uh, we can do addition. And in C++, that's marked with a, with a plus sign. Subtraction, uh, marked by a dash. Multiplication, with an, with, that's expressed in C++ as an asterisk. And division, which is, which is uh, represented by a slash. The backslash, so so starting from the upper uh, upper right hand corner down to the, the lower left, and so these are these are our these are our operators, um, and so with that we can uh, we can apply those those, those operations to uh, you know to any number of our of comp of computations for our calculator. So we can do addition, uh, division, uh, subtraction. I'm just showing a few examples here. I think all of us know how to work a calculator, but, but I just thought I would put this out there uh, just in case it was, uh, it was new. All right, so, uh, so with that, uh, let's try to do some arithmetic uh, um, operations in, in C++. So, uh, so we should come back to our, uh, to our first version of the calculator. So I showed this a little bit at the end of the last lecture. Um, now we can, now we can, we can, we can start building on this. So, um, so what we have have here with this, uh, with, with this program is just something that, uh, that right now is just, it just outputs to the screen. What is 100 plus two? Um, and just a, a quick tangent. So this, this is source code. Um, what I'm gonna do for the remainder of the lectures regarding, uh, regarding C++, is I'm gonna I'm gonna set up my uh, my code structure like this, so there will be source code and it will be in this this box here up top, and so it has a it has a sort of chalk like line around it, and it will be gray in the middle. Um, then uh, from that source code, we will we will perform a compilation, uh, and the compiler messages will be shown in this blue uh, blue blue bar down here. That would be the result from compilation, and then that's uh, that has sort of that has a dash line around it. And then from compilation, we can then do execution, and that will lead to the program output, which will be in this uh, black rectangle with, uh, with, with, with green lettering, just sort of emulating what a terminal might look like. And so, uh, so now if we, if we do this, if we take our source code, so this is, ver this is our starting version of the calculator, um, we, can then, uh, we can then compile uh, compile this. And in this case, this gives no errors. And so the compiler then builds an executable. And then from that compilation, uh, we would then execute, and the and the output would just say what is 100 plus two, and that's 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 great. So now if I move to my next version of the calculator, so now this is going to be version 01. Um, I made this modification and I added a second line, and I'm going to print something out here, and um, and so you know so if I want this to now print uh, 102 or 102 at the, at, at, you know, at, um, you know, as the next line, what should go here in this program output? Well, one option, you know, if we're following the spirit of the lecture, we shouldn't just put 102 in quotes because, you know, because that really is us doing the computation. How do we get the, the how do we get C++ to actually put 100, to actually do 100 plus two? Um, 
any thoughts? Well, if you if you're thinking about it, you can pause here and and, and reflect. Uh, but the answer is uh, is just we take the number one hundred plus two, and C plus plus will add those numbers together and then output the result to the screen. And so noting that plus is our is our operator to add two numbers. And so now we've done our first uh, arithmetic operation in C plus plus. Great. Um, all right. So now, now that we have this, we can, uh, we can take our second version and we can say, you know, we don't, you know, if we want to clean up our code a little bit, you know, we can say, we don't have to do this in two lines. We can do this in just one line. So we can say, what is 100 plus two, stream that out to, to standard out output, then stream the, the result of our, of our operation, the standard output followed by a new line. And, you know, it's just good form to add, to, to, um, to add an informative comment about what this code does. And so here, so we're just gonna put a comment here that says perform addition and, per, and output the result of screen. So other people that might have seen, that might be looking at our code, understands what we're trying to do here without having to, to be their own, uh, you know, compiler and executor to try to figure things out. You know, it's just helpful. And it's not also not helpful for, for other people, it's helpful for you, for your future self to be, to say, all right, I know what I was, I, what I was actually trying to accomplish. All right, so if we compile this, we will get no errors. And then when we, when we run our program, we should get the, the we should get the same thing as before. Um, our program output is still correct. And so we're moving on. Let's assume for, for just, just now that our, that our code is error-free. And so we're not gonna show these compiler messages. We'll just assume that we have, we, we have no errors. And then, uh, and then if the error comes, we'll, we'll, bring that compiler, uh, we'll bring that compiler window back. All right, so let's build on our code. So for version four, let's, instead of just doing addition, let's try to do all arithmetic operations and then print those results out to the screen. Um, and so if, if I have, uh, so for these lines right here, if I'm trying to say, what is, uh, if I have additional lines that ask what it was a hundred subtracted by two, a hundred times two, 100 divided by two, what should, what should go on those lines? Well, following our, um, following our, um, our, our operations that we've, that we listed out before for C++, we can simply just say that we have a hundred minus two, a hundred times two, or hundred asterisks two, and 100 uh, backslash two, and so uh, and so this really this this will then this program will then compile. What do you think the output would be? Well, if we're doing this right, we get uh, we get 100 um, we get uh, 102 as 100 plus two, uh, 98 for 100 minus eight, 100 times two being 200, and 100 divided by two is being 50. That's great. That program that that conforms to what we're, what we expect these math, these F arithmetic operators to do. Um, note that we could, we can do this with, with, with any numbers. Um, and so, um, so if we like, if we just wanted to try eight and five, I could go through my code and everywhere I saw 100, I can put eight, everyone, everywhere I saw two, I could put five. And, and if I run this, assuming no compile errors, uh, you know, I get, I get this, uh, I get, you know, I get these results, eight plus five, gives me gives me 13 great uh eight minus five is uh is three that looks that's right eight times five is 40 my elementary math my my math from elementary school is still working out that's good um now we say that eight divided by five is one and is that right some that is that doesn't seem right you know i mean i guess it is right but it's not, it's not really the whole answer. And so, so, you know, and I might be, I might not be happy with that, that answer. W what else do we need here in order to, to get maybe a, a more, a, a fuller expression of what eight divided by five is? Well, if we remember from, uh, from elementary school, when we do this, uh, you know, that eight divided by five is, um, isn't just one, it's, uh, there's also a remainder. So, um, so, so once we do this division eight, so eight will go into five one time, and it will leave three, three left, right? And so, uh, and so that remainder is something we have to, we have to, we have to get as well. And we can get that with, uh, with the, with the, um, with the percentage sign here, which performs a modulus operation. And so, um, and so modulus is going to be, uh, is going to, is going to then uh, compute the remainder for, for when we have two integers, it's going to compute the remainder for, for that, uh, for that division. As a reminder, an integer, as we have here at the top of the screen, are essentially our our whole our 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 um, 
our, uh, our, our whole number. So, so one way that you can, I like this, this picture. It had a good, good way of thinking about it. Start with the counting numbers uh, from zero, one, two, three, all of those numbers that, that all those whole numbers that go all the way out and then, uh, and then extend that number line going backwards. So you're only thinking about, about these numbers that are, that are integers. And so, uh, so if we have, if we have numbers that are of type integer, we need to perform a modulus for our a modulo for, our, for, our, for a division. Um, and so if we remember what this division will look like, we can just bring back our long division from, uh, from, from, uh, from elementary school. I think I started doing this in fourth grade. Um, and so, you know, so this is what our, what our integer division looks like. Um, and if we, if we break this down, there's actually, you know, there's actually fixed roles that we have for this integer division. Um, we should note that the thing that we are, that we are, that we are dividing is called the dividend. The thing that we are dividing by is called the divisor. The result of, of, of doing the dividing by is called the quotient. And so that is our operation of eight divided by five. And then our remainder is going to be, uh, is going to be produced by eight modulo five. And so each of these, each of these has their, has their roles. And so if we laid out what their, what their relationship is, we can say that we should always be able to assert that the dividend is going to be equal to the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. And those should always, always work out. And so you can just work that out on your fingers. I tried to find a very simple example so that we could do it in our heads. Five times one plus three will equal eight. And that's great. We should note that, you know, that, that, you know, if we consider that if we didn't can just consider these numbers themselves, but we consider that could be, you know, that these could be, these could be containers for, for any number uh, and any number, any, any numbers could be in here such that we, such that this relationship still held, uh, we could change it. We don't, we don't have to use these particular constant numbers. We could use anything that we wanted to. So let me just pick some numbers at random. Uh, let's say that our dividend is going to be uh, 7,894. And let's try a divisor of 548. Great. Um, and so now if we, if, though, if we just chose those numbers uh, arbitrarily, um, now we can figure out what the quotient and the remainder have to be to satisfy this relationship. And so in this case, we can take the dividend, we can access that and say, all right, this is what's going to be in the 7894 is going to be in the dividend role. And then for our divisor, we're going to put the 548 in the divisor role. We can then, uh, we can then for, for each of those, we can perform our operations uh, and, or maintain those relationships. And we don't really care what those numbers are, but, if we, but, but as long as they are, they are fulfilling those roles, then we can, we can then put them into, uh, into their, uh, we can perform the operations and, perform, and put them into their proper place. And so the quotient in this case will be 14, uh, our remainder will be 222. And, uh, and so now we, we've done this with, with any, any variable, we can now consider these just to be, to be variables. And so they, so now our relationship holds for this. Um, if you want to check, you should always, you should never trust anything you see that, uh, that, um, that, you, that somebody just shows you, you know, science really is about science. Isn't, isn't about, um, isn't just about believing what you hear. That's something that sounds scientific. It's about being able to verify for yourself, excuse me. And so you should check for yourself. I just use this long division calculator. I could have done it by hand, um, but you know, but you can see that we, you know, that we can, we can, we can get the the proper steps here so that we've done this proper long division. And so we should note that we, you know, that 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 when we started, we were doing integer division with constants. So we picked these numbers and then we applied them and then we we generated constants. But what we just showed is that we can do integer division with integer division with variables. So we don't have to necessarily care what specific div dividend or divisor we have. Once they're given to us, then we can just run through our steps and we can produce the, the, the quotient and the remainder. And so with this, this gets to the notion of variables that we could use in C++. So we could try to turn this process into C++ statements. And so if we did that, we get some source code that looks something like this. Um, and let me break this down one step by step, one step at a time so that we can, so we can know what C++ is doing when we see statements like this. So we should note that first that a variable is a container for a specific 
uh, for a specified type of data. And so, so, so we consider, consider this block here, this rectangle to be a container that's stored in the computer's memory. Um, and this, 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 uh, this, this particular uh, uh, container of data should, um, should have a particular type to it. And we're, we, in this case, we're always assuming, we're gonna assume in this case that we have integers. Um, but there are many different types of, of data that we could have. So integer just means uh, is, is we could have integers. We could have real numbers that are represented as what we call floating point numbers. And so we could say 3.141592. I'll let you think about what that number might be or what that constant might be. Um, and so, you know, and so, uh, you know, and so that gives us one level of precision. We could make that, we could get even higher levels of precision, giving even more precise number by using a double, which is a double, a double precision floating point number as you're seeing here for the same number, but just extended out, same constant, but extended out. Um, we can have characters. So that's just a single character. So in this case, this is, a, this is our plus character. It could be an A, it could be a B, it could be a digit, um, but really it's just representing uh, a, a character of text. And then we also have Booleans, which are either, which take on one of two values as either true or false. And so in this case, our, our, our data type is going to be, is going to be um, an integer. And so we have to declare that that's going to be the case. And so for our, for our, for our, um, so when we, when we declare a variable, in this case, integer variable dividend, that will create the container in memory and give it the, and, and identify it as, as dividend. Um, and so once we, and so we should also note that these are, that, um, that these identifiers allow us to then access the access to, um, to then store and, uh, and to store, uh, information at this location or store an integer at this location and also, um, and also access the integer, the value of that, of that, um, of that variable. So in this case, we can assign, uh, we can assign in this case, it's because we haven't assigned any values to it. We can then assign a, a value to this variable. And so in this case, when we get to our next statement right here, which is going to be assignment, uh, which is going to assign the, the value 7894 or 7,894 to our variable, then that's that, ver that value gets put into, into, our, into, into memory. Um, we can do the same thing uh, with our divisor. So we should note that, um, that we don't have to declare and then assign in separate statements. We can do it all in one statement where we can say int, we're gonna create an, an integer named the visor, a divisor and assign 548 to it. And so, um, so we can perform arithmetic operations on the values that are stored in variables. So at the current time right here, when we, by the time we get to this statement, um, we can say that the quotient, we're gonna create an integer called quotient and it's going to be the current value of dividend divide the current value of the of divisor. And so for this, if we break down what this what's happening in the statement, what we'll do is we'll retrieve a value from 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 the variable uh, from variable dividend. Then we'll also retrieve the value from the from um, from the variable divisor, and we and that will be um, and we'll perform this division. Once we perform that division, we get a result from that operation, which is going to be fourteen. And then we store that result to uh, to our variable, uh, which is going to store store the result to our variable quotient. And so this then this is what the statement then performs, so that we have our um, so that we so we can now have an integer that represents the quotient of our uh, of our operation. And so um, so we can then do this again for our remainder. So in our remainder, if we just took this, we're going to retrieve dividend. Uh, retrieve divisor, perform our operation. That should be a modulus. That's a, that's a mistake. I'm going to circle this because I need to go fix this. This should be, I'm going to, here, I'm going to fix it right here. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to, there we go. All right. All right. So, so that, uh, that should be, uh, that should be a modulus right there. And so then we get our, uh, we get our, um, we get our, our remainder, which is going to be 220. 222 and we store that in our um, we store that in our uh, in our variable for remainder. And let me clear the screen. We should note that it's really important that a C++ variable must be declared before it is used. So we have to declare that dividend is an integer and that that is a variable and then we can store into it and we can access it.
Um, if you use it before you declare it, the compiler will throw an error and will not be happy with you. Um, in addition, um, when we do assignment, so this equal sign right here, that is an operator in of itself. This is not equality. Um, in, in C++, when you say a variable, a, a variable takes on a certain value, you should see that as gets. This equal sign right here means dividend gets the value of 7,894. 7, it does not necessarily mean that dividend is equal to 7,894. And so assignment is not equality. And this, there will be subtle ways where we have to, where we have to deal with this. We should also note that the identifiers that we can use for these for, for a variable can't be a reserved word. Um, um, so here's a list of reserved words that I pulled from, I think, Wikipedia. Um, uh, and so, uh, so we should note that we can't have an integer named an uh, integer with, a, with an identifier of int, because that we can't, so we can't say int int, um, because int is a reserved word that just is only used to signify that we, that uh, the, the type of, a, of an integer variable. So with that, let's try to do some division with C++ variables. Um, so let's try to go back to our calculator and uh, and write some and write uh, some code to um, to to do to do a, a nice integer division program. Um, and so look, I'm going to skip ahead. I, I have I have my reference code and I have versions for that, um, but I'm going to skip from my version five to now uh, to now version nine. And whenever I whenever I try to change versions, I try I'm going to try to highlight in red, you know, the, the main things that you should take away from, uh, from my, my changes. And so now, and now what I'm doing is whenever I, I wanna use a, a, a dividend, I'm gonna, I'm gonna declare an integer, uh, an integer, and I'm gonna call that integer, I'm gonna give it the identifier, my number. Um, in my second line here, I'm going to, here, I'm gonna annotate on this. So, so this is going to be my my declaration right here. So that declares my my variable, uh, my number. Then I'm going to have this dividend right here. I'm gonna this is going to be my assignment. So I'm going to assign seven thousand eight hundred ninety four. Note that I can um, I can print out uh, I can print out this this value into the to the to the console to standard output. And then I can I can have a, a number of lines here that uh, that you know that perform the operation and uh, and then um, and then verify that that it's doing the right thing. And so note that I haven't done that yet. I've all, I'm still doing my I'm still doing just my constant division here. I should note that that when I when I want to do this the the right way, I'm going to going to Got to go to mouse mode. There we go. Um, when I want to just really look and see what, what I'm doing here, I'm gonna I'm gonna just sort of uh, also just cut off the screen so these files can get big when they when I have to move them up so we can see something. You'll see uh, you'll see that I'll just sort of move the move the the source file and then cut it off so you can see the the uh, the ridges there representing that there's some four more code up there in the file but we're just cutting it off right now. Um, and so I, as I said before, we this is our variable declaration our variable assignment and we can print out the current value. Um, so it's a little redundant, but, but, I, but I guess I didn't see that build coming. Um, anyway, if I took this and I have this, uh, I have my ninth version of the calculator right here and, uh, and, I, and, I, um, and, I, and I run this, uh, assuming that I have no compile errors, what would be the output of this program? Well, uh, that will just that will do uh, that will that will establish sort of my my ground truth. I can know I can print out my number seven thousand eight hundred ninety four. Uh, I my divi my my quotient still remains the same fourteen. That's correct. My remainder still says the same two hundred twenty two. That's correct. And if I look at my my um, integer division relationship that that just tries to ensure that um excuse me um. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I'm trying to ensure that seven thousand eight hundred ninety-four is equal to um, is equal to to our quotient. Or we're gonna. I'm sorry. We're going to say that our our uh, our dividend is going to be equal to our quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. If we subtract those two, we should get zero, and um, and we can see that that's the case. 
Now we should note that 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 we've established that we can do this with with our with our variables, but are the point of the variables is so we can. And, and one major point is, is to get rid of a bunch of these magic numbers. And so you know, so we have just magic numbers all over the place. These are constants that are just hard coded in the program, um, and that don't that don't allow us to to take advantage of variables. And so now that we know we can use variables in this way, our job is to try to remove these magic num to remove these magic numbers. And get the same correct result that we as we see down here. And so, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to remove the dividend from our from all, all of our operations. And so now I'm going to now anywhere I saw seven thousand eight hundred ninety four, I'm going to replace that with my number, and I'm going to make sure that I'm that I stream that out. So so in this case, I have to make sure that that I'm going to I have to break up my long string and and insert wherever where seven thousand eight hundred ninety four is. I'm going to put in. Uh, I'm going to put in my number, and so uh, so I have to make sure that I adjust for that the right way um, when I'm printing out my my printing the standard output. But if I do this, um, I've removed all instances of uh, of of um, of of seven thousand eight hundred ninety four except for my initial assignment, and I still get the the same correct answer. Similarly, I can create an integer. I can create a variable for uh, for our divisor. So now I've created a, an, an integer for our divisor. I've now put that, and so I've I assigned it to uh, this variable to um, to, uh, to to variable name with my other number. And so now, wherever I saw five thousand, wherever I saw five hundred forty eight, I can then uh, put in my. I can now replace that with my other number. And so now the operations don't depend on on uh, five forty eight as the magic number. And so if I run this, my output's still correct. We've, we've gotten rid of a few more magic numbers. Now uh, I'm going to clean up some space a little bit. And so I'm just going to note that, uh, that to me, good form is, you know, is declaring and initializing all of your variables first and then, um, and then, uh, and then doing your computations on them. And so I've, I've, I've declared my, my variable, uh, my number, my other number, and then I've also created some new integers just to, you know, just to, to be, to be clear about what they actually are. It's not just my number, but my number will actually be the dividend and my other number will be a divisor. So I created, um, created variables for that. You should note that what happens is whenever I perform uh, my number, uh, the, the assignment of my number to dividend, that is going to create a copy of my number to, uh, to this, to this, um, to dividend. And just to see what this looks like, if I'm just looking at these two statements, um, the first statement will, will declare my number and then perform an assignment of uh, 7,894. Once I do that, I, move, I can move to my next statement and that will create a variable called uh, dividend. It'll declare it in memory. And then, uh, and then uh, when I perform this assignment, it's going to copy over, uh, copy over uh, the value, the current value of my number two dividend. And then these will, and then they will be separate variables, and they will go their own separate ways after that. Um, and so this is really what's happening when you're when we're looking at just those two statements. So when we come back, uh, if we run our code here for uh, for version twelve, still get the same the the same output. And so now we've removed our our divisor and our dividend from our as magic numbers in our in our in our in our operations. Similarly, we could do this with our quotient and remainder as well. So, so now I've added two variables that will perform the quotient, uh, that will compute the quotient from the dividend and divisor, compute the remainder from the dividend and the divisor, and now, and then replaced, uh, replace those. So wherever I saw 14, I'm replacing it with quotient. Whenever I saw remainder, I'm going to replace, or wherever I saw 222, I replace that with remainder. And now when I run this code, um, our output is is still correct, and so we still we're still getting the same the same the same output. But the important thing here is that now we are we are only we only have two magic numbers now, right? And so uh, so we've gotten rid of most of our magic numbers. The only two we have now are going to be ones that we that are used to to initialize our variables. But we don't have to to hard code those because right now, if we run our program, the only thing this program does once we compile it and build an executable, the only thing it does is compute the answer to 7,894 7, divided by 
548. And what good is a program that does that? Would you buy a calculator that just <laughs> that only performed division on, on two on two specific numbers? You'd never do that. And so let's maybe just like what with a real calculator, let's ask the user to provide these numbers. And so C++ has a way for, for us to do that. And so to do this, we're gonna move up to version 18 here. And we can do this by, uh, by, by asking for a number. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use, um, we're going to, to use, uh, um, we're going to use this, uh, this, this, um, the, uh, we're going to use this, this part of, uh, this way of streaming in information from the, from the user streaming in, in uh, information from the input stream. Uh, and that is, uh, the, the, the CN of, of, from our, from our standard. And so STD colon colon CN is now our, is now our input stream, op, uh, um, uh, input stream, um, it, it represents the input stream. So the same way that C out standard C out provides output, we can, we can, um, we can put into, into C out and, 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 um, and it, uh, and it, and it will output to the, to standard output, to our, like our terminal, uh, CN will allow us to get information from our terminal terminal and assign it to a variable. And so we can do this. So, so when we have our, what we're going to do first is we're going to ask the user, we're going to print out some text to ask the, the, the user for a number. We're going to declare our number as, as a variable, and then we're going to assign uh, what the user responds back to us with as the number and assign it into this variable. So if we do this, we're going to, when we run this program, so let's just start and let's, let's step through it. Um, so at our current port, port of execution, we're going to come up to, uh, to just the, 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 um, the print statement, and that will be printed. And then we'll come down, we'll, we'll, our, our variable is declared, and we'll come down to, uh, to, to, um, to uh, the standard end. And then once we get to standard end, it's going to, it's, it's basically going to, to wait for us. And so I'm just showing our cursor here. And so this cursor is just basically saying when, once we've executed this, it's gonna, the program is gonna, gonna wait until, uh, until, until the user provides some sort of input. And then, uh, and so, so the program is sort of halted until, or the program is, is, basically, is essentially waiting uh, for the user at this point. So I'm now I'm gonna enter a number. So I enter in 7,948 and then I hit enter. And so once I hit enter, the program will then just run to completion. And so once the, so, so now, because there's it's waiting for the user for no other information, and we're just going to know that 548 is our, is our next number. So once we do that, our output's still correct. And we've gotten rid of one more magic number. So we have, we only have one magic number left and that's 548, but we can, but before we do that, let's just, let's just note that we can run that same executable over and over again. And we don't have to, and, and without changing anything in our code, we can get, we can perform division uh, of any number by 548. So, uh, so let's say that we, you know, when we run again, um, we're going to, again, start our, start our current pro, our point in execution. We'll print, we'll ask for a number. This time we're going to enter in a number five, uh, 5,481. And I chose that because I know that 5,481 is, uh, is 10 times our, our, our divisor uh, plus one. And so, uh, so just knowing that, I know that I should get back uh, that, that 10 is gonna be our quotient and one will be our remainder, just keeping it simple here, right? Um, so now let's, uh, let's run the program again. Let's try it, let's, let's try it. Let's try some really big number now. Um, so we're gonna then go to our, our print statement. Print statement comes out. We're gonna wait for user input. And so, so now for our big number, we're gonna try, we're gonna try this number. Um, let me see if I can if I can parse this right. 299,792,448. All right, big number. And once I do this, uh, once I once I input this and I let the program run. We still get the correct output, so so we get uh, we get the correct um, correct quotient, correct re remainder, and, and it all and it, and, it, and it conforms to our 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 um, integer division relationship. Awesome. Um, so you know, but the question is how how big can we go, right? And so let's try an even bigger number than that. Uh, but we're just gonna this will be the last time we do it. Um, and so uh, so now I'm gonna my program executes again. 
we ask, ask for a number. And now, so now I'm going to get a, a truly staggering number. I'm going to get, I'm going to pull in this number. Uh, that's big. Um, let's have, let's see what happens when I, when I run with this. Um, unfortunately, this, this doesn't, this doesn't quite work out. So for some reason, uh, my program thinks this really big number is, uh, is a, this really big positive number is a much smaller negative number. Um, and I can, I definitely get the absolute wrong answer uh, coming, coming out. And so why is that? Why, why did this not, not work out so well for me? Well, um, the answer is, is that, that there is a, a limit to what C++ can store as an, as an, as an, as an integer, right? So, so an integer has only a fixed number of, of a fixed capacity in, in computer memory. And that fixed capacity means that we can only store numbers up to a certain, a certain value. Uh, there's gonna be a max and there's also a negative max. Um, and so the, the largest integer that we can store is gonna be represented by int max or, um, or this number that's, uh, that's 2,147,483,647. So don't go higher than that if you're storing integers. So let's get rid of our last magic number. So if we can do this, uh, you know, we're gonna ask the user for both operands. So simply all I'm gonna do in this case is I'm going to then, the same way I use CN to get, uh, to, get, uh, to get my first number, to get my first operand, I'm gonna use that to get my second operand as well. And so that's the change that I made here. And so now when I do this, I, I should note, oh, important, important note, I can declare multiple variables in a single statement and I just use a comma. So I can, now I can say int, variable one, comma, variable two, and I can declare both of those. And that's very helpful to just conserving space because we're gonna need it for a lot of our programs. So we should note that once we do that, we have no more magic numbers. Our program is, uh, is magic number free. We, can, we, we are then, uh, our, com our computation is purely de uh, dependent on what, the, um, on, what the, uh, on what the user gives us. And so let's just see some examples of what that looks like. So if we come in, we, we're gonna print out our, our, we're gonna ask the user for to, to type in a number. And this time we're gonna type in 7,894. We're going to do it again. We're asked for another number, 584. We get the same numbers as before. Our program output still looks great. Let's try, let's try, the, let's try this again, uh, but this time let's use different numbers. So let's say that we, uh, we're asking the user for a number, and this time I'm going to enter uh, 22. And now I'm going to enter uh, another number, and I'm going to say 7. And so... Uh, so program output is correct, looks great. We can try this for more and more numbers. Um, and so this looks, you know, so we can, we can do this. Um, but, you know, but this should give us some, some concern in that, um, in that even though this program out, output is, uh, is correct, it may be unsatisfying. So for instance, if we were trying to represent the number pi or the constant pi, um, you know, three, which is, you know, so if we divide 20, 22 by seven, we'll get three. You know, I mean, that is an approximation of pi to the nearest integer, um, but, but that may be, you know, but that may be not what we need to represent, um, to represent what, you know, to do the computation we need for something very critical, where we really do need a better approximation of pi. Instead, we could do, uh, we could do 22 over seven. Um, that's a, that's a, that, that is oftentimes used as an approximation for pi. Um, but our computers typically don't represent, in, at least in memory, don't represent uh, you know, fractions like this is 22 over seven, we actually represent it as what we call a floating point number. And so when we, when we think about 22 over seven, uh, approximated as a, as a floating point number or a real number, um, you know, then, uh, or a floating point number that represents real numbers, um, we can come up with uh, 3.14286. And so that floating point approximation is oftentimes gonna be more, is gonna be much more precise than our, um, than our integer approximation. And so we should note that, uh, so if we're just thinking about these on the number line, um, you, know, and, uh, you know, so we're laying out uh, the integers. Um, so we can see that three is not, you know, has a lot of space between where the three is and where pi actually is. And so, so that's not a great approximation. Um, if we think about our floating point numbers, which extends across all the real numbers, the, the real number line, we get a better approximation of pi, um, which is gonna be more useful to us. And so, you know, if we want to get a better approximation of pi, why don't we just change all of our integers to floats? 
uh, you know, maybe that that's a that's a good way to do it. So we can just change. We can just uh, we, wherever we saw int, we can change it to float. Now we've got real numbers. Our division should 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 work uh, should work great. Um, unfortunately, we just have to make sure that that uh, that we respect the the types. And so we should note that um, that that this uh, this this modulus operator right here does not represent floating point uh, remainders. <laughs> there will be no floating point remainder in this case. Um, and so, uh, and so really, you know, so we have to make sure, so the compiler is basically saying for floating point, for, for, for floating point operators, that, uh, that modulus isn't there. And so we just have to, we have to note that, that this, this, that for float data types, um, we're not going to have, uh, we're not going to have that, that modulus, but let's say, so, so what we're going to do is, is we actually going to pull all this code out. We're going to move this code, uh, for integer division and just replace it with a very simple, uh, very simple one line, um, there's just going to be my number divided by the other number. And because these are floats, it's going to perform. We're going to get our, our nice floating point division. And um, we run our code right here. So we're going to get, uh, we're going to just figure out what the, what the, um, now it should be. So for instance, so when I, when I'm, so, um, so, so moving forward, whenever you see the cursor there, um, that's just denoting where user input is prompted. And then we're going to then execution and that user input is given and then execution just continues. So that, that's just what those cursors are going to mean uh, if we don't stop program execution. And so, uh, so given that, that this is the case, uh, what will, the, what will the, the output of this operation be in this case? Well, if we if our if if it holds the form, we should get uh, we should get our, our better approximation of pi, which is three point one four two eight six, and that is uh, that is that is correct. So, um, but could we get even better approximation of pi? Well, I think uh, I think we can. Um, so let's just you know if we go back and we can we can choose some bigger numbers here. Um, you know, choose some bigger numbers that that have the same proportions as pi. Uh, we can get, uh, we can, we can, so in this case, we use these two numbers. I'm not going to read them out. Uh, but now we get something that's even closer to pi, which is 3.14159. And just usually when I say pi, that is just what sort of comes out reflexively. And so that, that's a pretty good approximation. Uh, but we should note that when we typed in, we typed in this, this large integer, but we got this weird looking thing that came out that said 2.54851E plus 08. What is that? Um, and so when you see that, that means that what we're, what we're given is something in scientific notation, which says that, um, that what you should do is take that floating point number that we have, and the E plus eight basically means that, that, that you're going to multiply that floating point number times 10 to, uh, to whatever that number is. So this, in this case, it's going to be 10 to the, po 10 to the positive eight. Um, and so if, I, so if, we, if we perform that multiplication, uh, we get out an another integer which is going to be maybe not the same, but approximately the, the original integer that we had out. Um, and, so, and so this really is scientific notation. That's what, so when you see that, that's what it's saying. So given that we can do this, now, now our, 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 our division is working. Um, you know, we, can do, we can do real number division. We can do all of our, we can do any operation that the user is going, gives us. And so the user could, could pick one. Um, but we don't necessarily have a way to, you know, we don't necessarily have a way to, of choosing that yet. Let's so, so let's just provide all these operators, uh, all these operations at the same time. And so, uh, so now we're going to just add this in. So we're going to now do, do the same thing for plus, my, for, for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. And so now we've just added this to our, um, to our, to our program. And once we do that, uh, if we do, if we provide 22 and seven, I forgot to put the, the, the cursors there, but they're, they're, they're there. We did prompt for user input. Um, so now in this case, we'll, we'll, when we get 22 and seven, we'll get the proper addition, the proper subtraction, the proper multiplication and our floating point division as well. And so great, this, this, uh, this works well. One thing that I, I might want to do as well is I, I might want to get rid of some some unnecessary magic text. So if you look in our in our outputs, we've got we we're, we're putting out plus minus times and divided by. Um, you know I could do that, but but it might just be nice to to um, to to try to use a, a different data type for that. Um, so not just magic text. Um, so in this case, we added um, I created uh, I created four care four. Uh, variables for characters. So these are char variables. Um, 
And so I created a plus for addition, minus for subtraction, uh, asterisk for multiplication and, uh, and slash for, for division. So now when we output, we don't have a magic text in there that says, uh, that says what, um, that says what, what, uh, you know, that, that is, that, that says plus or what, or just trying to textually describe our operation. We have a variable that is the addition character. And so we know what that is. Um, I still left in the, the equal sign. I'll, I'll leave it to you to, 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 to add a character for that. But, but this is something that we can do. So we, we, we've actually, uh, we've actually took some magic text out of our, out of our, out of our code. So now if we look, if we, uh, if we bring this back to, to everything all together and look at our, our complete program right here, this is our, this is our, our calculator. This is our first, uh, first version of the calculator where we can get any two numbers and, uh, and then we can, we can, we can output the, we can output uh, the, um, we can get any two numbers and we can output uh, what addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division would be. And so, you know, and so we still are, you know, we can still do better than this. And so what we're going to do is, is on our next lecture, we're going to cover functions. And so function will let us organize and modularize our code. So we, so it doesn't look like this big jumble. We're going to have sort of nice clean steps. Um, and so really when we're starting to think about functions, I would, I would make the argument that, that our main is not itself. You know, this main function is where, where we start our code, where we're doing things, but we can, we can, you know, we can sort of compartmentalize different pieces of code so that we can have a more logical organization to it. And that's what we'll cover next lecture. And so that will bring us up to, um, that will bring it, that will bring us down our list a, a little bit more. So note that with our, with our ver current version of the calculator, we've covered operators, data types, and variables. Um, and so we, we're coming down this, this list where, you know, we're, we're halfway there. Um, and so, um, and so we're going to, uh, we're going to then cover functions next. And that will uh, that will be something we can do. Um, just some things to think about before you, while you're before we get to that next lecture is what if you know given everything that we've we've described, why would anybody use an integer when they could use a float? <laughs> why would you do that? What you know obviously we we could do more things with a real number line, but you know but there but there are many cases where people use integers. Why is that? Um, and so that gives you something that you could you can think about. Um, one, 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 one question you could have while you're thinking about that is if we entered in code, you know, 22 over seven, is 22 over seven of the integers the same thing as 22.0 divided by 7.0? Um, you know, mathematically they're the same thing, but does, a, does C++ think the same, think that? Um, what, what should happen if our user requested division by zero? So if we took 102 divided by zero or took the integer 102 divided by 0, 0.0, what, what should happen in that case? Um, what, if we're gonna try to build up, you know, so our calculator can do multiple, we're gonna try to build up so our calculator can do multiple operations in succession. What is that gonna look like? What does that look like in our list? And lastly, um, if I had this expression right here, eight divided by two times two plus two in parenthesis, um, what is that? Well, we will find out next lecture. And so I just wanted to thank you again uh, for listening to me. Hopefully we're chugging our way through C++. Uh, you'll, do, uh, you'll use this to do fun stuff with, uh, with Yana and Lab. And, uh, and thank you very much.